It is a landmark moment in the investigation into Russian meddling in the 2016 election. Paul Manafort, the one-time campaign chairman whose house was raided. This is a significant escalation. Special counsel Robert Mueller's team has examined the backgrounds of Russia. The president has responded. There is no collusion. Every year, the French media watchdog group, Reporters Without Borders, ranks countries in its index on press freedom. Eritrea has consistently been at the very bottom of that list, the worst of the worst until this past year, when it rose by one spot, above North Korea. There is only state-run media operating within the country, so many Eritreans have grown to rely on a news outlet operating in exile. Radio Arena is based in France. It beams its way home via satellite and short wave. The station has come to provide a lifeline for the 5,000 refugees fleeing Eritrea every month. Many of those refugees are kidnapped by human traffickers along the way, held for ransom. For them, Radio Arena plays two roles, one part news source, one part hostage negotiator. Before we show you this report, know this. We approached air train officials in the capital as well as London and New York to get their side of the story. None of them chose to comment. The Listening Post's Nick Muirhead now on the state of the media in Eritrea and Radio Arena, the news outlet on the outside, trying to make a difference. This is Meron Estefanos. She is a human rights activist and a journalist at Radio Erina. On her show, Voices of Eritrean Refugees, Estefanos highlights the plight of those who have fled her home country. And in doing so, she's become a big part of those stories. Hello? Hello? Hi, Mangus. The man that just called me, his two children who are 12 and 13 got kidnapped in Sudan and he's being asked for $10,000. And this is a newly arrived refugee himself that have no money. So I was trying to convince him, it's okay, you know, call my friend, I send you the number, uh, she will help you. To understand why Eritrean refugees call a journalist in Sweden when their loved ones are held for ransom in North Africa, you start with the story of Eritrea. After a 30-year war of independence with Ethiopia, the new president, Isaias Afwerki, who has now been in power for 26 years, chose not to hold elections, but keep the country on a war footing. In 2001, he shut down all privately owned news outlets and began expelling foreign correspondents until none were left in the country. All that remained was state media, news outlets that tow the government line. So there is only one government newspaper, one TV station, one radio station all run by the, by the state, and journalists of those who work in the government like, they don't have any freedom to express or they don't have. Like, so the media basically portrays as if the country is progressing, well as where everybody knows that the country is just like regressing again. When the Arab Spring was happening, the Eritrean state TV, like none of the Eritrean uh, state media was reporting what was going on in Tunisia, in Egypt, in uh, Libya. I remember watching the day that uh, Mubarak was ousted. I started watching the state TV the whole day, thinking, will they say something? It was never mentioned. So uh, the people are very ignorant. They do not discuss real issues that happen in the country. Any meaningful journalism on Eritrea tends to happen from outside of the country, which is why we're here in Paris. It's where Radio Erina is headquartered. It was set up in 2009 by a group of exiled journalists who used to work for state media. Now, from the safety of France, they can cover issues like immigration, national service, and the Constitution. Radio Erino was set up with financial assistance from the media watchdog group Reporters Without Borders. According to research conducted by the media development group Deutsche Welle Academia, it is now the second most listened to radio station in Eritrea, behind only the state broadcaster. Our first target is the uh, people in Eritrea, uh, of course. Uh, we broadcast via satellite. Uh, in shortwave. Inside Eritrea, 
the only channel you get is the government uh, uh, media. Of course, the Al Jazeera, CNN, BBC, uh, other medias, you can find them on the uh, um, satellite channels, but not in, in their own language, not in, in, in Tirinya. We also stream uh, online for uh, air trans outside the country, which is our second uh, target uh, audience. Most of the news that read really and broadcasts are, are not covered in, by the local media. It helps confirm the rumors in, in town by doing interviews or by getting access from other sources. That's how it just became like a lifeline between home and the diaspora. Eritrea produces an estimated 5,000 refugees a month. For many, Radio Erina is their primary source of information and can mean the difference between life and death. They face different challenges along the way, so Radio Erina tries to produce coverage that will help them at every stage. We kind of uh, put them in three uh, different uh, categories. For those who are inside the, the refugee camps, uh, we try to explain the hardship, the danger they face if they try to cross to uh, European countries. Uh, for those who reach their destinations, we try to give them information, kind of like uh, how to integrate and try to live uh, a new life. For those who are uh, on the road, they do face the biggest challenge. A lot of uh, terrible things happen. Eight years ago, as Radio Erina was getting started, a disturbing trend was developing along one of the main escape routes out of Eritrea. In the Sudanese and Egyptian deserts, refugees were being kidnapped by human traffickers and held for ransom. They would be given a mobile phone and told to call relatives and beg for money. Families that did not pay would have to listen to their loved ones being tortured repeatedly as the human traffickers tried to extort their ransoms. Which is where Estefanos comes in. As one of the only journalists covering the story, the victims and those trying to set them free started calling her for help. She became a go-between. As a journalist, Estefanos would shine a light on individual cases, and as an activist, she would help raise the money to pay their ransoms, which raises the ongoing debate over whether or not to pay ransoms. But in this case, it's hard to argue. The people that I was talking to on a daily basis kept dying one by one. I felt helpless. I did not have that kind of money. And then I talked to there were a group of 29, 28 men, one woman, younger uh, woman who was 18 at that time. And her story really touched me. And uh, everybody was saying, we understand, like, you cannot raise money for 29 people, but can you at least save this girl? Because for them it was too much to see their sister that traveled with them was being raped, gang raped in front of everybody. And they said, please help her. She doesn't have anybody. She comes from a very poor family. So that kind of motivated me to raise money. So I did not use Radio Rana, but social media saying, the girl that you heard in my program is in this kind of position, so let's do something. What sets the Eritrean refugee story apart is that they are not fleeing a war, but the byproduct of a war. Mandatory national service was introduced to rebuild the country after Eritrea's war with Ethiopia. The terms are meant to be 18 months, but according to Amnesty International, they can be indefinite, often lasting decades and are a form of forced labor, which the government denies, but most Eritrean refugees will tell you it's why they fled the country. Two years ago, the EU quadrupled its foreign aid to Eritrea to $237 million to keep refugees out of Europe. The money came with the vague proviso that Eritrea would improve its track record on human rights. However, when a France 24 crew was granted rare access to the country last year, it managed to show through an unscheduled stop on its guided tour that the practice of indefinite national service continues. There's no limit. We're not paid. They don't give us anything. It's the military service. Eritreans who listen to Radio Erina will know the horrors that await them if they flee the country. But still, they choose to leave. Which should tell you all you need to know about life inside Eritrea. But despite that, this journalist is asking them to stay. Migration is not the solution. Uh, fleeing is not, is not going to change anything. I strongly believe that. So I, I try to talk as much about these issues, about the kidnapping, so that people don't even attempt. Like whatever is making you happy, try to change it in your country. But if you flee, this is what will happen to you. So discouraging people from fleeing from Eritrea, this is one of the things that I fight for. 
inside uh, Eritrea, people are afraid of uh, talking and there is mistrust between colleagues, neighbors, friends. What we uh, created is people start to talk uh, what they hear about uh, uh, Eritrea uh, from, uh, from our radio. So if you start talking about some issues, then you're building trust. I think it has a lot of impact in, in, inside Eritrea.